First story. OP ran away after constant abuse from her entitled parents. Now they are spreading rumors that she is mentally unstable to get back her custody. But OP had solid girlfriend's parents' support. I've been sitting on this for a very long time and have waited until I was in a semi-safe or moderately safe place to say anything. I'm hopefully moving out on the 28th and feel like I can post this. And whether they see it or not, there's not much they can truly do at this point. It's kind of long, but this is a long story that took place over several years, so I feel like I've condensed it with enough detail to make some sense. I've been watching my three younger siblings since I was 14, and we had just moved to a different state. At that point, the youngest kid was two and a half, now six. Up until then, I'd never had a very good relationship with any of them. Barely hung out with them stayed mostly with my grandmother. Didn't even have a good relationship with my parents and was resentful of them because of my parents' mom and stepdad's very obvious favoritism toward them. It started small, just an hour or two, and they quickly devolved into watching them for hours on end, from the night when they made friends with neighbors and went out to watching them nearly full-time, and when the parents were home just before the pandemic hit. I watched them with no pay unless you count feeding, housing, or not giving me to an abuser as payment like they did until they started with $25 a week, no exceptions, and it didn't matter how much I actually worked and I never actually touched any cash. They would buy things for me if they had money on the side from their own spending. The pandemic made it very, very easy to guilt trip me into watching them all the time and sacrificing everything. There are several different stories I could tell, but some of the quick points are. I let them pull me from school to do all virtual despite having some apprehension they pressed this solely so I could watch and pick up the kids after they went to school. I let them pay me and then hold this pay over my head, I'd be nothing without them. They'll just not even offer the gracious money they're offering and make me do it anything. They'll kick me out stop feeding me etc. I let them continue to pull me out of school for my senior year another long story. And I'd always said through the pandemic I wanted to do my senior year in person. I let them ruin my relationship with my girlfriend for a long while before I put my foot down and repaired it going steady since sophomore year. As serious as a high school level relationship can get. And I let them take my opportunity to get a job license and work for them with 45-60 hour work weeks babysitting. These kids are not angels, hell, not even part angels. They go unchecked and undisciplined. I am the only one they even semi-listen to, and that's a 50-50 chance. They run around like banshees, hit and scream, and are just generally bad kids. They're constantly on a screen and have been, as long as I remember, watching scary videos, murderer Y videos, and other things that generally young children shouldn't be watching. They stay up as late as I do I've had trouble sleeping literally since I was a baby. And I'm trying to help myself without becoming dependent on melatonin. And such so I don't become immune, and sometimes even later. For reference, that can mean 4, 5, 6 a.m. And I sometimes get knocks at my door asking for food and such. It's not just me who says these things. My grandmother, who watches them when we go back to our hometown my family. Who sees them, my girlfriend's family. Who's seen them act this way, their teachers, etc. Also say this or say it more politely. The youngest is the worst, going the most unchecked and ignored. And when she's bad, it's, well, she has ADHD so. No, it's not an excuse, not even a diagnosis. You just don't parent her and don't want to help her mom. I have a DD diagnosed, unmedicated because my mom refused to remediate me after the last pills made it difficult to maintain weight and gave me facial tics. I understand that sometimes it's not fun or easy for people to be around me. But even I can say that I don't think she has ADHD. Or even if she does. I think she has a mom who doesn't discipline her and instead encourages bad behaviors. It's ridiculous. The middle kid is becoming more mature at nine, but he is still unchecked and doesn't listen. The oldest, who is now 12 years old, is realizing his parents don't actually parent and is becoming resentful as the younger girls get favored because he's getting prepped to be the next me. I understand the whole older kids babysitting younger kids thing, but you cannot expect a 14-year-old who barely recognizes her siblings' voices to be able to cope well with that kind of childcare job. Hell, I don't even really like children. And even as a kid, I didn't really hang out with younger kids than me because I found them annoying ironic, I know, because I was probably just as annoying. Making me do this made me resent them even more, in all honesty. It was exhausting and made me a resentful person for a while. And I still am very angry and have a lot of pent-up frustration that I'm trying to work through. I don't think I've ever been capable of caring properly for these kids, in my honest opinion, and they should have either a real babysitter or after-school care. I've had several breakdowns and just am not mentally well enough for this job, and my concerns and valid points for this have been ignored. When we moved towns a 23-minute drive between my house and my girlfriend's house for reference, they got very very bold. 
My biological dad is dead. And because of that, my mother receives a survivor's check with stipulations as to where it can be spent. My entire family bashes her for refusing to use that money correctly and abusing it. And it's an extremely sore and sensitive spot between us. Especially with all of the jokes that they use my check for themselves. And that the money isn't really for me but them. And how they quite literally refused to let me stay in my hometown where I was happier and healthier. Because that meant they'd lose the check. They've openly admitted they were never going to let me know of its existence. Because they didn't want me to know. I found out that the only reason they can afford the house we're in is because of the check. They depend on this despite having a second job and well-paying government jobs. You might say, well, the pandemic, but no. They've admitted that if they just cut back on frivolous things like that $1,000 armchair they bought in December, my mom's purses, and all of their other bullshit, they'd be able to do it on their own. They guilt trip me by saying that if I don't stay, they'll lose the house, and it'll be all my fault. Eventually, it all came to a head in October. I'd put my foot down and demanded I get a job. I needed money for college and had nothing to show for my life. And I had no way to pay for college. Not even a license to get there at that point. This ended in a huge blowout fight, where I did some things I regret I called names. Kicked a recycling can over, punched a wall, got in my parents' faces when they did mine. Essentially stooped to their level. And I'm ashamed to admit it. But I will own up to my mistakes. And she trashed my room and told me she'd never let me leave. And that as long as I was her kid. I had no say in anything and my life was hers to control, essentially. She went on a rampage, saying how she'd take every contact with everyone I knew away, how she'd make everyone hate me, and how she'd make it so I couldn't physically leave because I was all alone and had no one. I am extremely afraid of this. I'm afraid of people leaving me. I'm afraid of people not coming back. And she knew this as she said it all. I snapped out of it at that point, realized I had a scared dog upstairs who'd be coming back to my bedroom with glass everywhere because my mom threw a box of 20 or so glass bottles on the floor collected for recycling, realized I had a girlfriend I loved who I wanted in my life school to attend that I couldn't if she were to take my laptop, and that I would still have to watch her kids effing eat and actually survive here. I immediately backpedaled, apologized, and went along with what she was saying. I was promised therapy, pills, help with the kids, and whatever bullshit she spilled out, and I knew everything was a lie. I refused to watch them until we had an agreement. And then I was paid $32 a week flat. I'd be leaving Friday Sunday for a real job in my old town with my girlfriend. So I lost Friday's money. Whatever. I'd be making way more at the new job was supposed to be in cash. But that stopped about a month afterward. When it was put on a cash app card. But only with whatever they could spare. Depending on my wants and their extra money that they didn't spend. Since then, I've been threatened to be held at my house. So I'd be fired with my phone turned off because my job's policy is that if you don't show up to a scheduled shift without any kind of notice with an exception to emergencies of course, then you're fired. They run a formal restaurant that's successful and can't risk liabilities like people who don't show up, which I understand. I've been avoiding a bank account because I don't want her to have access to my money cash my money with my girlfriend and hold it at her house, not mine. I'm looking for a car and I'm getting ready to make a DMV appointment the week of my birthday hopefully. Along with a bank savings account and Walker's license. They've been getting more and more aggressive with saying, I'm not leaving, to the point where it's mentioned at least once a day. At first, it was that you weren't leaving until you graduated. So we had someone to watch the kids. Then, they needed my check to pay their mortgage, and wouldn't get it unless I stayed. And now it's that I'll stay until the end of, or beginning of depending on mood i.e. summer to, help them in their time of need. They've threatened to put me in a psychiatric hospital, to have me arrested, to give my family members up for things they have asked them to do to guilt trip me and to have my girlfriend's parents arrested for harboring me as a runaway after I'm 18. I don't think they can do that unless I'm in danger, which I'm not. And her family can pass a wellness check with flying colors, which I agree with. I can also prove I have a paying job, nutritious food to eat, and a safe place to stay. I am not a nanny. I've been prevented from furthering my life, and I've been withheld from getting the necessary things to survive on my own. I owe nothing to them or their kids, and in self-preservation, I have to let them be on their own and figure their own SHT out. I didn't want kids, I didn't buy a house I couldn't afford, and I depended on a government check to help me along. I needed to go to school to get the kind of job I wanted. I'll answer any questions in the comments. Edit. I would like to thank every single person in the comments. I appreciate all the kind words and advice I've received, and I'm taking a lot of it to heart. SHT hit the fan only about three or four days after I posted this. And the situation is ever-evolving and more complicated than I'd like to admit. I will post again by the end of the week with a full update and explanation of everything that happened. And until then, 
I would like anyone who is concerned to know that both my dog and I are safe for the time being. Update. My dog and I are safely moved out and okay. A lot went down in the past two weeks, and my mental health wasn't too great after leaving. So my update is a bit late, as I didn't want to just babble nonsense and overwhelm myself further. I do want to state before you read this post that I understand that some of my actions weren't necessarily the best choices, and that I know some of my actions were influenced by guilt tripping or manipulation. I'm okay with my current situation or agreement, as it's incredibly temporary, and I don't think there would have been a more peaceful resolution. A few days after posting my original app story, I revealed to them that I was leaving. I did this because they were already starting to poke around and ask questions, and I knew they were going to find out either way. I wanted to be a bit in control of the situation and didn't want to risk getting caught off guard. I can honestly say it was the best solution, knowing what I know now and what happened after I told them. I attempted to talk to them calmly with my girlfriend and dog in the car across the street and me as the only one in the house. It was a safeguard in case anything got physically violent, because if it did, I would walk out and leave, and would 100% tell the police I didn't feel safe if they continued to pursue me. This backfired a bit, as they were very, very upset and said things I just can't forgive them for, but I'd already anticipated the freakout. I was told that I would be cutting off all my bridges to them, and if I ever had to ask them for help or come back, I'd be doing every house chore they could think of, and I'd have to quit my job to watch the kids 24-7, even on weekends. I was also told that my relationship with my girlfriend was abusive, unsafe, and unhealthy, that I was manipulated by her to move in, that they didn't want me anymore, that I was screwing them over, and that it didn't matter if I was trying to better my life because it didn't benefit them, etc. I would like to point out that they told me in the fight that they hoped I wouldn't lose my job because I wasn't leaving for the next two weeks and how that'd look on me applying for new ones. I didn't let on that. I already talked to my boss. I'd anticipated and even heard much of this before. So I just kind of sat quietly and reiterated that I wasn't changing my mind about moving out. They still weren't happy, but I talked to my girlfriend in the car for a while afterward and eventually sent her home after calming down. My mother had already contacted my grandmother, someone whose opinion means a lot to me to try and convince me to stay until at least the end of the school year. She had my grandmother bug me until about a day before I left and tried to guilt trip me into staying. My mother also used the fact that my grandfather has cancer. How are you going to get up to pa? You're never going to see pappy before he dies. Against me and other older family members on my dad's side to try and convince me to stay by saying if I don't stay, they won't take me up there, and it's expensive to go. I refused to stay, and it ended in a few days of quiet tension between all of us before we started talking again. I was then told I could actually leave for work, and that, she said that when she was mad, why would you think that would stand? It resulted in me leaving for the weekend my most important valuables had been moved out. Stuff like my dead dad's hat or stuff from my baby box, some trinkets from family etc. We fought for the remainder of the two weeks, going back and forth on compromises, and what I was going to do, and how I was going to care for myself. I will point out the big fights and talks, as they are important. After coming back from that weekend, I sat down with them per their request to talk about potential situations. They said they genuinely couldn't afford the house and child care, showed me that no one was even responding to their ads, and that after school services were all booked in our area. I said fine, then let's talk about it, but I'm a, not giving up any days I could potentially work at my job and be not agreeing to anything at this point because I need time to think. The potential plan we came up with was that I would come home on Sundays, my stepdad would pick me up, and my girlfriend would pick me up on Wednesday to take me to work in the same fashion as how we'd do it on Fridays. I walked away from that conversation with both of us agreeing that I agreed to everything we talked about. I then got texted later that night 1-ish in the morning asking if potentially 8-9pm was good for a Sunday pickup. I tried to avoid the question and ask something else but he was persistent until I finally said, yeah, that could potentially work if we do that. Intentionally vague, or not agreeing that it was a permanent solution. My girlfriend refused to drive me back and forth, which I agreed with as it's an hour's drive back and forth, and as they needed me, and because they refused to help me get my own license when I wanted or needed it, they should be the ones to drive me. I came up with a solution. Well, maybe I could give them Wednesdays if I had them off. Otherwise, the other babysitter they'd managed to find for part-time work could do the Wednesdays I couldn't. They flipped again, saying I was going back on our agreement, that I was lying and a manipulative little SHT, that I wasn't being reasonable, and that I was again effing them over. I reiterated that I didn't agree to anything. I never agreed to even stay in any capacity, and I was pissed that they attempted to gaslight me into believing that I did. 
It ended in another argument where very much things were said again. But I kind of just ignored it, stuck to my guns, and they relented. I didn't give them Wednesdays because I wasn't comfortable with them anymore, because I couldn't trust them to get me to my job reliably on Wednesday, and I didn't really want to be there more than I had to, and their other babysitter agreed to take Wednesdays. It ended in an argument over Messenger while she was at work, where she essentially told me that when I worked next, I could pack my stuff and leave. She then texted my girlfriend and her parents a huge list of all my problems and how I'm just using them and waiting for my chance to F them over too. Including discussing my psychiatric hospital visits and past parental abuse hospital visits, mostly because of the parental abuse, and I was freshly 13 at my last visit. They said they dismissed it because they'd uh, known me for three years at this point, and what my mom was saying wasn't lining up with what they saw, and b. They weren't going to take my mom's word when she was acting crazy and revealing things they weren't even sure if I was comfortable discussing outside of a therapist's office. I'm incredibly grateful for them, and I have told them that if I ever do anything to wrong them, I expect punishment, but that I'd never intentionally wrong them. I really do love them like my family, and would protect them like they are. She came home and tried to say that me buying myself and my siblings pizza, the other night was, trying to get brownie points before screwing them over, and that I was being an arse. I had no ulterior motives with the pizza. I just wanted pizza and felt guilty ordering some and not sharing because the kids had wanted pizza for the past two weeks, so I just bought them some too. I was prepared to leave that night and had all my stuff packed. I said as such, and she flipped again. It resulted in a fight where she slandered my deceased father. I'm not sure if what she said was true, and I'm not really willing to find out, name called, said I would come crawling back, that she'd always loved me as her firstborn, but hated the person I was, and begged for me to stay and help. It ended with both of us walking away unhappy, until we talked about it later that night again. What it's come down to is this. I work Monday or Tuesday. They drive me to and from, meaning they pick me up Sunday and drop me back off Tuesday. My stepdad gets a work-from-home job in April after training through March, and then I no longer have to come over at all, and they'll leave me alone. They want nothing to do with my dog at all, even just to spite me. My mom doesn't like him, and neither does my stepdad, so they said if I didn't take him, they'd dump him. I scheduled my permit test wrong, and it got rescheduled for the 16th. But good news is I've studied enough that I'm 100% sure I'll pass, and my girlfriend's mom said to not pay for a walker's license, because it's a very short wait, and after I get the permit I can get the bank account and such. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my SS check, and I'm in contact with the office and school, trying to figure out how to change the stuff. My mom wants half of it, and she'll be quiet if she gets it. So I'm debating just sacrificing that half for the sake of peace of mind and sanity, since I have a steady job and plan on picking up another after April. I'm sorry if this isn't what people wanted, but I've seen what they do to people to get revenge if you screw them over. The way she talked to me during that last fight tells me she no longer sees me as her kid in any capacity, just somebody she'll F over if I don't at least agree to the bare minimum like I did. But after April, I'm no longer useful, and I'll get forgotten like everyone else which is why I'm even agreeing to it in the first place. If you have any questions, I'll answer them. I understand some of this is a bit rambling or emotional, but I'm not sure how else to write it. Second story. OP kicked his brother and his family out of his house after their son stole OP's engagement ring and won't tell where he hid it. The reason I 26 him no is because I literally caught him in my room going through my things. And it's on a freaking camera. My nephew is nine and has a habit of stealing things. They've gotten in trouble a few times at stores because he'd leave with something in his pockets. But of course, because he's a kid, they usually just say he forgot he had it. Even at school, my brother has told me they have had to come talk to the principal on a couple occasions. It doesn't seem like they've done anything to stop it. They had to come stay here with me because my brother lost his job, and they weren't going to make it with all their bills, including rent. He's doing Uber RN while he searches for a job, and they can move out. I didn't want to because of my nephew specifically, but family is family, I guess. A month ago, I finally bought an engagement ring for my girlfriend that I was planning on proposing to soon, but now I don't know. It's a 4K ring that I spent over a year saving up for. It's been hidden in my room under one of my drawers. One time, when I found him snooping in my room, I told my brother to control his damn kid, then got one of those cheap spy cams in my room just in case. Then last week I noticed it was out of its box. After checking the camera, it showed he was in there again when I wasn't home. My brother and his wife have yelled at him. He says he left it by the TV in the guest room, but it's not there. They looked through all their stuff and his too. I know for a fact he's lying about not having it, 
because that's the same thing he said about one of my watches he took and then ended up finding it. By the second day, my brother tells me they can't find it at all. And I told him either they find the ring, or he repays me the 4k I spent on it. If not, they can't stay here anymore. My brother got really upset. He told me I know how their situation is right now. And yeah, it's a tough spot. But I couldn't ignore the fact that his kid, who can't parent, took something extremely important to me that cost a lot of time and money. They were given a week to leave my house if they didn't find the ring. They're having to stay at a cheap motel. But my brother won't stop begging to come back because what they're paying right now each night is coming directly out of their savings. He won't stop calling me heartless about letting something like this come between helping them out through a difficult time. And my nephew keeps saying he's sorry. It's just hard right now to want them around. I don't even know what to do about the ring, and every time I think about it, it just makes me so mad that it's hard to care about their situation. Does that make me an arsey hole? Some relevant comments. Redditor. NTA, it's a terrible situation but they should have taken measures sooner to get the kid to stop stealing. Also, I'm not sure a kid that young can do anything with a 4K ring. It's not like he can go to a pawn shop and sell it. Do you have homeowner's insurance? Perhaps you can make a claim. However, that may cause more problems. Is it possible that your sill or brother found and sold the ring themselves? OP replied. He likes shiny stuff. He stole a kid's bag of marbles from school just because he liked how shiny they were. He doesn't necessarily steal things because he thinks he can make money off them. Redditor. They've sold the ring. That's why they can't give it back. What a load of thieves, OP replied. My watch he stole is worth way more than the ring. And my brother already knew that because a year ago, he was surprised. I even owned one of those I have a wealthy buddy who gives out these kinds of gifts like free candy. If that was even the plan, they would have been smarter about selling that instead. So I highly doubt they even did this. Redditor. Oh lord. First off. You bought your girlfriend a $4,000 ring. That was a lovely gesture. I certainly hope you have a lifetime of happiness ahead of you. Secondly, there's an old saying. If you live in a glass house, don't throw bricks. Your brother is relying on you financially. He should not have allowed his child to steal. OP replied. And it's one I know she's going to love because she's told me about it for years. I'm really anxious about it and hope it just turns up. I don't care if it has to be forced out of them or if, by luck, it pops up but I really want to present it to her when I ask her to marry me. That's all I want, and this stinks. Redditor. NTA. File a police report. And file a claim with your homeowner's insurance. OP replied. I don't have homeowner's insurance. It's not a house. Editor's note. OP later added more in the comments that he is just a tenant, and he is not allowed to make any changes to his apartment without his landlord's permission. And his landlord as quoted. You'd be surprised at the stupid SHT that he doesn't allow and the things he lets slide. Redditor. File a police report and take them to small claims. You have the proof on camera. NTA. Hopefully not. But there is a possibility he was encouraged to do it, and it was pawned. OP replied. Nobody knew I had a ring for my girlfriend. It's been hidden in my room since they even came to live with me. That same Redditor. It just seems odd that the ring is now gone. I know kids lose things because they put them in odd places. Just knowing your family is financially in trouble, although I don't know them personally, it wouldn't be inconceivable that they might have sold it. OP replied. It's a possibility. But I also know my nephew's a liar, and likely knows where it is but won't say anything. This isn't the first time something is stolen that he acts completely innocent about until it's found somewhere and he hides it. Redditor. NTA. But don't you find it kind of strange that a few days after the kid lost the ring, your brother has enough savings to afford a hotel? You know there are people who use their kids, prams, etc. to shoplift. Could this be a learned behavior? Maybe the kid stole it for your brother to pawn. Call the cops and take them to court. That's the only way you're going to get any money back. Or maybe the rings if the cops find them in a pawn shop. OP replied. My brother already told me they had savings before they moved in. So it was not that they just magically had money. Rent here ain't cheap. So depending on how many months he would have been without a job, it would have run out fast anyway. Now since they don't have anywhere to go, unless they want to head down to a homeless shelter, I think it's more that they don't really have a choice, but to use that money. I will be calling the cops though. Tired of playing nice. Redditor. NTA. They sold the ring. Another Redditor. I think so too. At this point, why won't his nephew say where it went? Another Redditor. The thing with kleptomaniacs is that they often don't know what to do with the things they steal. He may have washed it down the sink, flushed it down the toilet, buried it in the garden etc just to hide it. It's not so much about having things, 
it's about taking them. It's highly unfortunate that he took something so important, and his parents definitely need to get him help, and should have done so already, which could have prevented this. OP replied. OSHT, I never thought about this. All weekend, I've been doing a deep cleaning, trying to see if maybe he hid it somewhere. I'm freaking praying I find it soon. The watch he took from me was literally hidden inside one of his pairs of shoes in the closet. I don't know why he does this, but there's definitely been times he's strategically hidden things he stole. OP was voted NTA. Update. Nine days later. So many of you have asked non-stop for an update. Sorry, it took me a while to log back on. But lots of stuff has been going on. Yes, I found the ring. It was a stressful day doing a deeper search in my house, trying to think like my nephew, and looking in places where I think he'd hide something if he really didn't want it to be found. And the decision was that if it really wasn't found and my brother wasn't able to get him to talk, or they wouldn't be able to pay back what I'm owed, then the police would get involved. He did beg me not to, but I told him, you better pray I find it, or you come up with the money to pay me for it. Guess both our prayers worked, because, guess where I found it? In the freaking sink. The sink. And that's thanks to the comments that told me to look in those places. I don't know what I would have done otherwise. It was the sink that was in their guest room, and I'm glad he didn't just throw it away. You guys don't know how freaking relieved I was to find it. It took some work to remove the pee trap under the sink to get it out but I was just so happy to find it. The same night my girlfriend fiancé got back, I proposed to her, and she said yes. After a nice romantic dinner, just the two of us at home. The plan was to wait, but after all this SHT, I thought, F it, I'm proposing ASAP before anything else happens. After my brother heard about me finding the ring, he thought this meant they could come back. I said no. He wanted to argue about this again. All I told him was that he's lucky I haven't gone to the cops since there was already video evidence of his son taking the ring, and there's no way I'm letting them back in when my nephew wouldn't even say what he did with the ring. I talked with my nephew myself after I found the ring, but he just said he didn't want to tell anyone because then I'd be mad at him for hiding it. Honestly, I just don't have the energy for them anymore. His problem is their problem, and hopefully they get him help before it's too late. The only thing important to me is my fiancé and me starting our lives and planning our wedding. Thank you Reddit for your help. Seriously, you guys were my lifesavers. Edit to add. I just received this news after already submitting my post for approval and just wanted to add because I'm so happy. But my girlfriend also informed me she's pregnant. She found out while she was on her trip and was waiting for a good time to tell me. Not related to this post, but I don't care. I'm going to be a DD. Relevant comment. Redditor. Congratulations OP. I have one small suggestion. Get the ring looked at by the jeweler if you haven't done so already. I don't know what damage may have been caused by it being in the sink. Also, maybe it should be cleaned because, once again, I don't know what got on it while it was in the sink. Once again, congratulations, OP replied. Yeah, that's our plan. It looked completely fine when I got it out only a couple smudges, but still. Luckily, since it was the one in the guest bathroom, it wasn't used since they were gone. Redditor downvoted comment. Information. Is anyone doing anything to help this troubled nine-year-old? Or are a bunch of adults standing around talking about how they can't control him? What kind of attention does he get when he's not stealing? There's something more to this story, OP replied. Well, I, for one, can't because, well, I'm not his parent. My brother has heard what I've had to say about my nephew's issues. It's going to have to be up to him and his wife to step up for him and get help. There's not much else I can do anymore. Redditor, I'm so glad you found it. Congratulations on your squishy. I hope you are not inviting your brother and his family to the ceremony. At least not until they, mostly your nephew, make sincere amends. Maybe have him do some community service or something. Make it unpleasant, long and sort of rough. OP replied. We decided a long time ago that when we got married, we'd want it to be something really small with a few friends or just elope. Then spend big on the honeymoon. So it's possible he might not be invited. But we'll see. There's some big expenses coming our way anyway, and we also would like to go on a baby moon to celebrate. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.